It was an act of defiance that changed the course of a nation. Patrick lit a fire in pagan 5th century Ireland, ushering Christianity into the country. But who was this man who became the patron saint of Ireland? Ireland was a beautiful island shrouded in terrible darkness. Warlords and druids ruled the land. But across the sea in Britain, a teenager was poised to bring this nation to God. Well, Patrick was raised in a Christian family. Uh, his uh, father was a deacon, his grandfather was a priest. But Patrick says that from an early age, he really didn't have any serious interest in religion, and that he was practically an atheist when he was a teenager. Around 400 AD, Patrick was abducted from his village and thrown onto a slave ship headed for Ireland. And he saw that as uh, God chastising him, first of all. That was his first view. He says, we deserved what we got. We were carried off at 16 years of age over to this foreign land. Patrick was sold to a chieftain named Milchu. He spent six years tending his master's flocks on the slopes of the mountains of Ireland. Patrick recounts his time as a slave in his memoir entitled, The Confession. And he says, I prayed a hundred times in the day and almost as many at night. And through that experience of prayer and trial, he came to, go, to know another God, God the Father, who was his protector. He came to know uh, Jesus Christ the, in, in, in those sufferings, and he came to be united with Christ, and he came to identify with Christ. And then, of course, he, he also the Holy Spirit. One night during a time of prayer and fasting, Patrick wrote, I heard in my sleep a voice saying to me, it is well that you fast. Soon you will go to your own country. And again, after a short while, I heard a voice saying to me, see, your ship is ready. Patrick escaped and traveled 200 miles cross country to the coast. He found a ship ready to sail, but was refused passage. After a desperate prayer, he was allowed aboard. Patrick returned to his home and family. His experience of God's grace and provision solidified his faith, and he began to study for the ministry. One night he had a dream. There was a man who came from Ireland with a whole bunch of letters, and he opened up one of the letters, and it said across it, the voice of the Irish. And then he heard a voice coming out of this letter that said, holy boy, please return to us. We need you. Patrick struggled in his soul. Could he return to Ireland and minister to the same people who had enslaved him? Once again, he turned to God in prayer. He received the answer in a dream. He talks about how he, in this dream, is trying to pray, and yet he can't. And so that he hears a voice coming from inside of him, which he realizes is the voice of God praying for him. Patrick knew he had to go and convinced his church that he was called to be a missionary to Ireland. He set sail in a small ship. Patrick landed here at the mouth of the Slaney River. When Patrick set foot on this shore, a new era dawned on this island. It was an Ireland of tribalism, an Ireland of war, an Ireland of suspicion, an Ireland of violence and death. Here he came as a virtual stranger to this country of warring factions. They worship multiple gods of the sky and the earth and the water. And so that was his first challenge, uh, was to convince uh, the Irish that uh, there was just one God and that this God really did love them. Patrick came face to face with tribal chieftains and their druid priests. The showdown came on the morning of his first Easter in Ireland. Part of the pagan worship was uh, that a fire was lit and first of all, the fire uh, on the hill of Tara, and no other, no other lights all in Ireland. This monastery on the hill of Slain is where Patrick, in direct defiance of the high king of Tara, lit a forbidden fire. He was summoned before the king, and he explained that he wasn't a threat, really, because he was bringing the new light, the light of Christ, the savior of the world, the light of the world. The first light of Easter day was dawning. Patrick brought the hope of Easter Day to Ireland. The weather can be absolutely brutal here in Ireland, 
But just imagine what it must have been like for Patrick in the fifth century as he trekked across the countryside, bringing the gospel to the pagan Celts. People sometimes made fun of him because he, he said that he often, God often gave him a message that there was danger ahead. Uh, but he said, you know, laugh at me if you will. Uh, this is uh, something that has protected me in Ireland. Listen to Patrick's poem of faith and trust in God, The Breastplate. Christ be with me, Christ within me, Christ behind me, Christ before me, Christ beside me, Christ to win me, Christ to comfort and restore me, Christ beneath me, Christ above me, Christ in quiet, Christ in danger, Christ in hearts of all that love me, Christ in mouth of friend and stranger. Myths and legends have grown up around this hero of Ireland. The very central teaching was the Trinity. And then how does one explain three persons and one God? And then the story, Patrick took the shamrock and showed, you have three leaves on this. One of the famous legends, of course, is that Patrick drove all the snakes out of Ireland. In fact, any snakes in Ireland had disappeared during the Ice Age. The legend about the driving of the, of the snakes may in fact really symbolize the driving out of evil. This is St. Patrick's Memorial Church in Saul. In 432 AD, Patrick built a church on this site. It was the first Christian church ever built in all of Ireland. Preaching the gospel, of course, baptizing converts, um, appointing clergy. Patrick's ministry lasted 29 years. He baptized over 120,000 Irish and planted 300 churches. What Patrick did was really lay the groundwork uh, for Christianity. This memorial stone marks the final resting place of Patrick. Now it's not really known exactly where he was buried, but they believe it's somewhere beneath the church on this hill, down Cathedral. He was a man who came to face and help his former enemies who had enslaved him. He came back to help them and to to do them a great favor, the greatest favor he possibly could. I honestly feel that what Patrick taught Ireland was there is a cost to discipleship, but it's a cost that Christ will help you to pay.